the female tycoon of the internet era was reborn in the backyard of the most bustling royal mansion. Other women are busy competing for favor, but she is eating melons in the backyard. System. Someone assassinated the king of Jean tonight. Lu Chi Chi, what is it related to me system? The prince has died, you need to be buried with him. Lu Chi Chi could only send talismans for the sake of her life. From then on, the king of Jin's intrigue reached its peak, and Lu Chi Chi worked diligently and peacefully, not vying for favor or blocking disasters. She resolutely hid behind the man as a rice worm, except for various female partners seeking a sense of existence, and her days continued to lie flat. When Constable Ma was catching the prisoner, he accidentally bumped into the little girl from the heavenly immortal tower and couldn't get up for a long time Li Shangshu's grandson, who has obtained another beauty, will be carried into the door tomorrow the son of the shopkeeper Ma at the Hutanka restaurant is not his own, and the situation is very fierce now. The shopkeeper Ma is going to divorce his wife Lu Chi Chi nests on a soft couch every day, comfortably listening to other people's gossip. Suddenly one day, she tasted a big gourd about herself. The emperor intended to crown her as queen. She immediately packed her bags and fled, just out of the palace and was caught. The emperor stared at the bundle in someone's arms and said, You can use gold, silver, and jewelry as you please, or sleep until you wake up naturally every day. You can eat whatever you want. The palace maids and eunuchs are all at your disposal. Once you leave the palace, there will be no such good things, and no one will serve you. Are you sure you really want to leave? Lu Chi Chi trembled and said, As long as I'm not the queen, I'll agree. Keywords of the novel Empress, lying in the harem by eating melons wins without pop-ups. Empress, lying in the harem by eating melons wins. Download the full text. Empress, lying in the harem by eating melons wins. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Stealing. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Stealing the Day of June. It's too hot, the dog is lying under the tree to cool off. Lu Chi Chi sneaked out of the back door of the Jean Prince's mansion with her maid Chun Bai. All the way to the bustling farmer's market. Seeing the lively chickens, ducks, and fish, they are all natural and pollution-free ingredients. The dish is made, just thinking about it, Lu Chi Chi's saliva is about to flow down. Chun Bai looked at it, speechless. Today, the king of Jean returned triumphantly with many women in the backyard dressed exquisitely and with shaved heads, hoping to attract the king's attention. Good luck, young master. Today, I still have leisure and leisure to buy groceries and cook. Xiao Zhu, let's go back first. Chun Bai became anxious. Okay, I'll go back after buying it, Lu Chi Chi said, her eyes shining as she looked at the fat and lean pork belly. The fat residue made from pork belly was called a crispy and delicious dish that had not been eaten for a long time, making her craving, Lu Chi Chi walked up to the meat shop and said, Brother Lu, three pounds of pork belly. Big Brother Lu, who had a fat head and big ears, smiled and said, Miss Lu is here. I smelled the aroma of your pork from a long distance and came back. Brother Lu chuckled and cut the pork belly with one knife, placing it on the scale, which weighed exactly three pounds. Brother Lu's knife skills are truly exceptional. Brother Lu chuckled and said, Ancestral craftsmanship. This craft cannot be lost, otherwise where would I find such good meat? Lu Chi Chi said, putting the pork in the basket. What is Miss Lu planning to do this time? Squeezing and eating, the fat residue squeezed out is called a crispy dish. I'll bring you some to try. Okay. Brother Lu happily cut off a piece of meat and put it into Lu Chi Chi's basket. I'll eat your fat residue, and this piece is considered a gift. Lu Chi Chi gave a thumbs up and said, Great. Chun Bai paid and took the young master away, talking to a meat seller about what they were doing with so much. Lu Chi Chi didn't care and soon had a new goal, the fiery red rooster. Chicken feet are thick and large, and according to their appearance, 
they should have been raised for over two years. This type of chicken is rare in modern times. This chicken makes spicy whole chicken, the soup taste is more rich and delicious, and the chicken is more powerful. Aunt Huang, give me this chicken. Miss Lu has good eyesight. This chicken has been raised on the mountain for over three years. Miss, I don't want anything bad either. Lu Chi-Chi greeted Aunt Huang and bought the chicken. So, Lu Chi-Chi greeted the farmers all the way and bought a lot of ingredients. I was thinking about having spicy whole chicken for lunch today, squeezing fat residue, and having a cucumber salad. The lean meat given by Brother Lu can be made into boiled meat slices. Thinking about today's lunch, my heart feels happy. She is a big shot in the internet age, who has been working hard for many years and finally succeeded. She wanted to reward herself by buying a mountain, building several houses in front of the mountain, planting organic vegetables, and raising chickens on the mountain. Apart from eating and sleeping every day, she no longer has to feel tired like a cow. Unexpectedly, with just one move of time travel, besides feeling a bit awkward about one's identity, it can also be considered as a dream life. As she thought about walking back, Chun Bai saw that the young master had finally taken the road and started the nagging mode. Master, the prince has been on the expedition for a year and has finally returned. Let's go back and dress up well, and compete with all those women. Speaking of this, Chun Bai is not the main one. The ten young masters all have the same food, clothing, and expenses. Xiao Nianqing, relying on her family's wealth, bribed manager Hu, and always oppressed the young masters in everything. I can't do it. They are all pretty and can dress up. Even if I go, I can only serve as a companion. Speaking of King Jin, he is a legendary figure. The emperor was in old age, and the surrounding countries were watching closely. The king of Jin took on a heavy burden and saved the state of Chen in the bloody storm, making the country's territory more stable. I heard that King Jin is very handsome and extraordinary. However, Lu Chichi entered the residence of the King of Jin for one year, and the King of Jin went on a one-dot-year expedition. She has not yet seen the King of Jin himself. I think the young master is the best-looking. Lu Chichi said nonchalantly, that's because you have an eye problem. Chun Bai is not happy. With my appearance, anyone who can have a little dim sum will not go out to buy food today. At this moment, the sound of the system appeared in Lu Chichi's mind, alarm. Lu Chichi glanced around and said, Speak quickly. System. Someone wants to kill a child. Lu Chichi. Where is it, system? On the street ahead, a five year old boy wearing a red coat buying candy figurines. Upon hearing these words, Lu Chichi stuffed the things in her hand into Chun Bai's arms and ran towards the street ahead. Chun Bai thought that the young master had finally been persuaded by herself and planned to compete for favor, happily following behind. At this moment, Lu Chichi quickly found the child wearing a red coat according to the system's prompts. At that moment, a horse was startled and ran wildly, causing the surrounding people to flee in fear. The child wearing a red coat heard the commotion and was frightened, not knowing how to dodge. I'm about to be trampled under the hooves of a horse. At a critical moment, Lu Chichi pounced and, as soon as the horse's hooves fell, she rolled over to the side holding the child. As the horse's hooves fell, two heavy hoof marks appeared on the ground and quickly ran towards the front. Someone stepped lightly and jumped onto the horse's back, struggling to stop the crazy horse. Xiao Zhu Chun Bai saw the thrilling scene and shouted loudly, collapsing to the ground in fear. Everyone came over and sighed one by one, the hooves of a horse falling on the child were bound to die. Some people look at the hero on the horse's back, while others go to see the situation of the child. A maid ran out of the nearby shop and said, Young master, are you okay? Someone said, Your young master is fine. You should thank Miss Lu well. If it weren't for Miss Lu, your young master would have been trampled to death by a horse. The maid heard this and quickly thanked Lu Chichi. 
Lu Chichi waved her hand and said, Your young master has been scared. Let's take care of the young master first. After finishing speaking, she spoke to Chunbai, who had collapsed on the ground, Chunbai, come over. Chunbai stumbled up from the ground and came to the little master's side. Little master, how are you? Have you been injured anywhere? There's no injury, I'm scared and rushed, I'm a bit hungry. As long as it's okay, as long as it's okay, Chunbai said while wiping her tears. What does it mean to be okay? I'm starving and I spilled all the ingredients I bought on the ground. This is called being okay. Lu Chichi complained and picked up the ingredients on the ground with Chunbai, walking towards the Jean Prince's mansion. She didn't notice that the man who had subdued the horse not far away kept looking over here. Chunbai was frightened by the young master and did not realize that the dusty man riding on the horse was the king of Jean she was talking about. The king of Jean looked at the departing master and servant. The maid's clothes belong to the Wang mansion, doesn't he remember Miss Lu in the mansion? Guard Zhao Kai ran over and said, Prince, the army will arrive in another hour. King Jean glanced at him and quickly walked towards the nearby Yiping tea house. A scene flashed in my mind of a woman rushing over to save the child. Arriving at Yiping tea house, King Jean headed straight to the second floor. Someone waited for a long time, watching the arrival of the King of Jean, one by one kneeling on one leg on the ground. King Jean glanced and walked over, standing with his hands behind his back in front of the window. Guard Sun Shua stepped forward and said, Prince, they will take action tonight. Tonight. Returning triumphantly, some people are hosting banquets to celebrate, some are taking their lives, it's quite lively. The new article has been uploaded, and there is a lot of support for the collection comments of the article, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 the Prince Returns. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 The Prince Returns Jean Yu Yuan. Lu Chichi returned and finished taking medicine, lying on the soft collapse, squinting her eyes to rest. Ding dong, the system prompts the sound, congratulations to the young master, promoted to level 1, and rewarded with one amulet. Lu Chichi. Amulet. System. You'll soon know. Lu Chichi wanted to ask further, but Chunbai ran back all the way with her food box. Lu Chichi saw Chunbai with red eyes and asked, What are you eating today? Chunbai, with red eyes, took out the dishes one by one from the food box, and then followed the little master to help him stand up. Little master, you're all like this, still thinking about eating, she said, It's because I'm injured that I need to make up for it. Chunbai thought of a scratch on the back of the young master, tears streaming down her face. At that time, I thought the young master was really okay. When I came back and saw my bloody back, I thought about it and felt very sorry. Lu Chichi came to the table and saw the spicy whole chicken. It's slightly worse than what I made, she said, little master. People are like iron, rice is like steel. If you don't eat until you're hungry, you should take good care of your injured body. If you talk again, it's disturbing my eating. If you disturb my eating, it's not wanting me to repair my body. If you don't let me repair my body, my wound won't heal, it won't heal, and I'll do it in the future. Chun Bai saw that the little master had such a good attitude, so she quickly stopped her mouth with a bowl of eight treasure kanji, little master, this was cooked in the kitchen before leaving, would you like to have a try? Lu Chichi took a bite and nodded satisfied, soft and glutinous, with excellent control over the heat. After eating a bowl of babeo kanji, he began to attack the spicy chicken again. The quality of the dish is not very good, but the taste is excellent. The chicken that has been killed now is also a free-range chicken that has been raised for several years, and its taste is excellent. After taking one bite after another, after a while, I saw Chunbai sitting next to me without moving her chopsticks. Why don't you eat? I won't eat. Thinking of the danger of going out this time and causing the young master to be injured, she felt so sad that she couldn't eat. Lu Chi Chi reached out to pinch Chunbai's face and said, 
This little face has been raised by Miss for a year and now she has some flesh. Miss. Hurry up and eat. If you don't eat again, I'll eat everything, Mississippi. After the master and servant finished eating, Chunbai tidied up the dishes and Lu Chichi rested again on the soft couch. There is a scratch on the back, which is not a big deal. She will feel a bit uncomfortable these days. After eating and drinking enough, she is also tired. I slept in a daze for a while and heard the commotion outside. Chun Bai walked in from outside and said, What's going on outside? The prince is back. The others were so excited that they couldn't sleep. They were dressed delicately and wanted to catch the attention of the king of Jin. Only the young master had just woken up. The prince will come back as soon as he comes back, why are you all excited? Lu Chichi didn't take it seriously. Chun Bai wants her master to appear familiar in front of the king of Jin, so that she can compete for favor in the future. However, when she thinks that the young master is injured, she can only give up. Turning to look at the young master, young master, you shouldn't be eating spicy food. You'll have to drink the herbs later. Herbs. Lu Chichi thought about such a bitter thing and felt a pang of nausea in her heart. Why didn't you try to persuade me when I was eating just now? Master, I said, you will listen. Lu Chichi nodded and said, Yes, the chickens are all ready. It's a waste not to eat them. Chun Bai, dot. It was you who came back and personally instructed to do it in the kitchen, okay. Okay, okay, I'll take the medicine, okay. Upon hearing this, Chun Bai ran out satisfied, worried that she might come back late and someone might change their mind. Lu Chichi is speechless. The original owner was sent to the Jean Prince's mansion, but couldn't bear it. He died of illness and woke up in this body. His body was too weak, and he had to eat herbs for ten days to survive. When she thought about the taste of herbs, she suddenly felt a bitter taste in her mouth. Soon, Chun Bai returned with herbs in her hand. Dong Yu pinched her nose and poured in a bowl of medicine. After drinking it, she quickly covered her mouth. Chun Bai looked at the empty bowl and saw that the master didn't spit it out. She said, Little master, for tonight's celebration banquet for the prince, I wonder who the prince will take to the palace. Chun Bai looked at the young master's silence and said, When I just came back, I saw Xiao Nianqing carrying a bundle to Sun Rume's place. I don't know what else to send. Xiao Nianqing's father is the governor of Jiangnan, and no matter how much he gives, he doesn't feel sorry. Her father is a corrupt official and very wealthy. Chun Bai's face darkened slightly. You've already said that the prince may take someone to the palace, and it's normal for Xiao Nianqing to walk around. Who would make Sun Rume's aunt a concubine in the palace? Lu Chichi felt that giving it away was also a waste. Will the prince take Sun Rume with him? Do you think it's possible for the prince to take a concubine with him? Chun Bai was happy and said, it turns out we're all busy. This time, she felt relieved in her heart. Not necessarily. Why? If you're familiar with the face in front of the prince, you'll have a greater chance of climbing the bed in the future. With a rosy face, little master. Don't be embarrassed, you just advised me to do the same. Chun Bai stomped her foot with a strong aura and left holding a medicine bowl. Finally, my ears cleared and I was about to take a break when the system heard a beep. System. Someone assassinated the king of Jin tonight. Lu Chichi. What does it have to do with me? System. If the prince dies, you will be buried with him. Lu Chichi was stunned for a moment. Is it so serious? System. According to the rules of Qinghua, if the prince dies, all the women of the prince will be buried with him Lu Chichi. I am a concubine, not a woman of the king of Jin. System. My concubine is also buried with me. Lu Chichi suddenly felt bad. She doesn't want to die yet. System. Give him this. Lu Chichi felt inexplicable and was about to speak when she had something in her hand. 
Upon closer inspection, it looked like a small copper mirror with some hollow patterns on it, which looked very beautiful. System. This is a talisman, using it can save the life of King Jean. Lu Chichi rushed out with a talisman in her hand. Just went out and met Chun Bai who came back. Where has the prince gone? Chun Bai thought the young master had finally enlightened, I'm about to enter the door. Quickly, take me to see the prince. I don't know how I can see the prince. The prince is the master, not to say that I can see him. Lu Chichi realized she was too anxious, thought for a moment, and then grabbed Chun Bai and ran, take me to the study. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Amulets You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Amulets Lu Chichi and Chun Bai avoided many excited concubines and arrived at the path that must be passed by to the study. Running all the way, Lu Chichi calmed down. She crouched behind a big tree heading to the study, stretched her head, and looked outside. Chun Bai nervously looked around and whispered, Little Lord, you want to see the prince. It's against the rules to stay here. If you were to be treated as an assassin, my life would be in danger. Do you think that the King of Jin has just won a battle and is going to the palace to face the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit has said many important things. When the King of Jin returns, he will definitely go to the study first. What's wrong with me waiting here? Little master, this is even more inappropriate. The study is heavy and the little master is here, which is even more dangerous. Don't talk. What else Chun Bai wanted to say could only be silenced, as she had already heard the footsteps of death. Soon, the king of Jin came wearing armor. Chun Bai was so scared that she shivered. Lu Chichi stared at the man walking ahead with both eyes. Her armor shone brightly in the sunlight, almost blinding her. After getting closer, the situation improved a bit. The man's eyebrows and eyes were sparse and cold, and his figure was upright. In his early twenties, he was already imposing. The chill emanating from those black eyes made people retreat. Lu Chichi wanted to leave, but thought of the death of the King of Jin. She wanted to be buried with him, and the monthly calendar also flew away. Bite your teeth and rush over. The intensity of the charge was not well controlled, and the force was too strong, almost rushing into someone's arms. Suddenly, a sword appeared, forcing Lu Chichi to stop. I can't stop the car, my neck hits the blade of the sword, and I'll straighten my hair on the spot. She worked hard to calm her frightened little heart, tried to build a smile on her face, and held the talisman in both hands to deliver it to the King of Jin. Prince, I have specially requested a talisman for you. Please accept it. Upon hearing these words, Chun Bai even felt a sense of death. King Jin returns triumphantly, you bring talismans, this is a curse. Startled, he ran out and knelt on the ground, Lord, please spare my life. I didn't mean to offend you, your highness. Please spare me a lot. After the guard Zhao Kai found out the identity of the newcomer, he confiscated his sword and waited for the King of Jin to strike. The King of Jin recognized Lu Chichi and stared at her with great interest. In the morning, he bravely saved people, but in the blink of an eye, he showed a weak posture. I don't know what kind of surprise the Empress Dowager will bring if she selects ten concubines. Lu Chichi remained silent when looking at people, and the sword that threatened her life was still around her neck, trying to show her sincerity. Prince, this is the talisman I've been begging for for you. The King of Jin looked coldly at him. Lu Chichi felt unwell and disregarded the threat of the sword around her neck as she held the talisman and stuffed it into the hand of the King of Jin. Zhao Kai can't calm down anymore. What does King Jin mean? If he doesn't want to, this woman won't have a chance to get close. Lu Chichi approached and lowered her voice, someone wants to kill you. Upon hearing this, Zhao Kai thought the news was leaked and wanted to kill Lu Chichi on the spot. King Jin shouted loudly, someone, drag her away. Quickly, manager who rushed over with people and dragged Lu Chichi away. 
Lu Chichi shouted loudly, Prince, you must be careful. Half an hour later. The news of Lu Chichi's failed attempt to win favor and being imprisoned in the Jean Jade Garden spread throughout the entire Jean Prince's mansion. The originally restless hearts can only temporarily calm down. No one knows that the King of Jean is not good at women. He doesn't even have any women around him, and they are all forcibly handed over by the Empress Dowager to the King of Jean. This time, after a year in the Jean Prince's mansion, they finally brought the Jean Prince back. Lu Chichi's foolish behavior disrupted their plans. Xiao Yinqing came to Sun Rume inside, Sister Sunday. Sun Rume smiled slightly and said, Who made you angry again? It's Lu Chichi, how could she do such a shameful thing? Sun Rume looked at the maid Chun Lu. Chun Lu shook her head and said, I don't know. Xiao Yinqing saw that Sun Rume was still unaware, so she spoke up about Lu Chichi stopping the King of Jin. Sun Rume said, No, Lu Chichi is too timid to do this. Sister Sun, this is true. The prince was furious about this and had Lu Chichi dragged away on the spot. Can't it? Sun Rume's face changed slightly, as if she had been scared. Xiao Yinqing added fuel and vinegar to the story, and Sun Rume finally believed it. It is said that a dog that bites cannot bark, and this is indeed true. After Xiao Yinqing finished speaking and left, she went to various courtyards to stir up Lu Chichi's situation, causing public outrage. After that, she returned to the Jade Palace and sent the news out. Jin Yu Yuan. Lu Chichi lay lazily on the soft collapse as if nothing had happened. She was too excited just now and touched the wound on her back. She came back to apply medicine and her condition improved a bit. Her back was still sore. Eating a piece of dim sum is sweet in my mouth, I feel better. Chun Bai couldn't help but complain when she saw the young master like this. Little Lord, you have been in the Jean Prince's mansion for a year now. I have told you that the prince does not like women to approach you. Even if you have been waiting for the prince for a year, you cannot be too excited to seek medical treatment in a hurry. Lu Chichi ate a dim sum and licked her finger. Your lord is not ill. I'm just using an analogy. I feel that the way the young master competes for favor is not appropriate. I have no intention of vying for favor. Little master. I've said before, someone is going to kill the prince. The king of Jin cannot die, he will be buried with him if he dies. Lying flat for a year, with food, drink, and someone to serve, life is too comfortable for her. She doesn't want to be buried alive. Upon hearing this, Chun Bai thought she was talking nonsense and angrily left. Lu Chichi saw that she was leaving and quickly reminded her. The dinner in the evening is more abundant, it's really tiring today. Chun Bai turned her head angrily and said, Master, you have offended the prince. Shouldn't you think about how to make the prince forgive you? Why do you still want to eat? I'm saving your prince. How many times can I understand? Chun Bai looked at the young master for a long time and didn't realize where she was wrong. She stomped her feet and left. She was assigned by Butler who to serve the young master. The young master cannot be spoiled, and her life is not easy. She can only come up with a solution. Lu Chichi is in a good mood and continues to eat dim sum. Everyone felt that she was losing balance in her pursuit of favor, only she knew it in her own heart. If the king of Jin dies, these concubines will be buried with him. She is only seventeen years old and doesn't want to die so early, nor does she want to be buried alive. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Drunken Dysfunction you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Drunken Dysfunction The King of Jin Returned Triumphantly The Emperor held a banquet in the palace to celebrate. The high dot ranking ministers in the court brought their female relatives to participate. The Emperor is happy today and has given many rewards to the King of Jin. Many female relatives stared at the King of Jin, like a hungry cat seeing a fishy smell. 
Their eyes were like wolves and tigers, waiting for someone to fall alone and create a chance encounter. Everyone knows that King Jean is not good at women. A year ago, the Empress Dowager forcibly gave King Jean ten concubines, indicating that King Jean also liked women, but did not find anyone he liked. I believe that each one is a true goddess, and only I am worthy of the title of King of Jean. If you become the Queen of Jean, you will definitely have unlimited scenery. Among many princes, the Emperor highly values the King of Jean. Perhaps the King of Jean is the future Emperor, and who doesn't want to be the Empress? Who would want to miss such a shortcut? The King of Jean ignored the scorching gazes around him and sat calmly drinking. Until the banquet was over, I bid farewell to the Emperor and Empress, and the King of Jean stood up and left. Walking on the way out of the palace, without drinking for a long time, he felt dizzy when the gentle breeze blew. Leaving the palace, Zhao Kai walked over with a horse and said, Prince. The King of Jin glanced at him, took the reins from his hand, and flipped over to mount his horse. Just after riding for a while, the dizziness became even more severe. The King of Jin noticed something was wrong, and just then, the horse suddenly went crazy and charged forward. The King of Jin immediately tightened the reins, wanting to restrain the horse. It's useless. The horse ran wildly. Upon seeing this scene, Zhao Kai immediately felt uneasy and quickly caught up. In the blink of an eye, the King of Jin and the horse disappeared from sight. Fortunately, there was a hurried sound of horse hooves in the distance, and Zhao Kai and his men ran away. The King of Jin tried several times to control the horse, but it was always in vain. Watching the horse commit suicide and rush up the tree, in a critical moment, the King of Jin could only abandon his beloved horse that he had been following for many years. Suddenly, a cold arrow flew from the side. The arrow came too suddenly and too fast. The King of Jin, who had been fighting for years, reacted quickly and dodged the hidden arrow. Just then, another arrow flew in. The king wanted to dodge, but his mind was dizzy and his reaction slowed down a bit. It was too late to dodge. His pupils tightened and he watched the sharp arrow fly, only to see the tip of the arrow infinitely magnifying in front of him. Ding! A burst of chest pain. My previously dizzy head improved and I saw an arrow stuck in my heart being caught. At the same time, the horse collided with the big tree, and with a bang, blood splattered on the spot. The splashing blood dazzled the eyes of the King of Jin, and for a moment in a daze, he thought he was on the battlefield. When Zhao Kai rushed over with his men, more than ten black-clad assassins flew around. King Jin and others experienced a brutal killing scene, fearless of the danger in front of them, and soon began a counterattack. The King of Jin looked at all of this with cold eyes, pulled out the arrow from his hand, and touched his heart with the other hand, taking out a blackened amulet from inside. The words that Lu Chichi said echoed in her ear, someone is going to assassinate you. Zhao Kai and others slaughtered the man in black and came up to him. Prince, you. They were stunned when they saw the black talisman in the hand of King Jin. The King of Jin stared at the talisman, his gaze as cold as frost. When changing clothes, a subconscious action saved my life. Angry eyes were fixed on the body of the black-clothed man present, and he carefully looked at the arrow, with a hint of mockery curling up at the corner of his mouth. Who did it to him? I had a rough idea in my heart, but Lu Chichi, how did she know someone was going to assassinate her? What is her relationship with the assassin? A group. Countless thoughts appeared in his mind, and soon a sound of hooves came from his horse. The King of Jin put away his talisman, covered his heart with one hand, and showed an injured and strong support. With a slight force from his hand, a blush appeared on his chest. Quickly, the King of Chu and the King of Qin rushed over with their guards, and upon seeing the appearance of the King of Jin, they felt a sense of warmth and concern. Third brother, are you okay? said the King of Chu. Third brother, who doesn't have eyes and dares to take action against him. Said King Qing. 
The cold gaze of the king of Jean swept over their faces and said nonchalantly, no problem. Third brother, are you injured? Qin Wang noticed blood stains on his chest with sharp eyes. After saying this, the king of Chu also saw the blood stains on the chest of the king of Jin. Someone, please escort your third brother into the palace and let the imperial physician take a good look. The king of Jin did not accept their good intentions and flipped onto Zhao Kai's horse, saying, There's no need to disturb our parents for a small matter. The king of Chu looked worried. Big brother, I'll leave this to you. The king of Jin said and rode away. Zhao Kai saw that the king of Jin had left and called on several brothers to take away the dead horses. King Chu and King Qing stayed behind to deal with the corpses on the ground. Every corpse is sealed with a sword, giving no opportunity for reflection. If it were done by the same person, it wouldn't matter. If multiple people use the same method to kill, it would be intriguing. The king of Jin returned to the palace and the imperial physician Ma arrived. In less than a burning incense stick, Zhao Kai escorted the imperial physician Ma away and walked to the door, not forgetting to explain to him that Ma kept the news of King Jin's injury confidential. He returned to his study again and saw the king of Jin holding a deformed amulet in his hand. If it weren't for this thing today, the king of Jin would be in danger. The question is, how did Lu Chichi know that the king of Jin was in danger? King Jin clenched his amulet in his hand, thinking about the scene of a woman speaking, then thought of King Chu and King Qin, and thought of the current situation. This time he returned triumphantly, and the emperor's dragon heart was overjoyed. He intended to become the crown prince soon after, and he had repeatedly made contributions. They couldn't wait any longer, so they were eager to take action against him today. Soon, Sun Shua brought news confirming that the horse had been tampered with. Zhao Kai couldn't believe it, just because after King Jin entered the palace, he had been by the horse's side without anyone approaching. How did the other party take action? The King of Jin was also very curious and personally went to visit the horses. Seeing the death of the horse, he felt very uncomfortable in his heart, and then thought of what Dr. Ma had just said, his heart sank. The one who should have come is still here, I can't escape even if I want to. After the king of Jin entrusted the matter, he went to Jin Yu Yuan. After a series of twists and turns, it was already late at night, and by this time most of them were asleep. They came to the outside of the Jin Yu Yuan and looked at the candlelight revealed through the window. Zhao Kai took a step forward and spoke, The prince is here. Chun Bai in the room thought she had hallucinations. Thinking that the young master had offended the king of Jin today and was now imprisoned, I don't know when she will be able to lift the ban. She was still thinking of ways to please the king of Jin, but even late at night, she had no idea. On the contrary, the young master was still drinking happily and advised her several times, but her injured body couldn't drink. If the young master didn't listen, she had no choice. Just thinking about it. I heard the sound coming from outside the door again. Open the door. Chunbai, who was clever, quickly got up and went to the door. When she opened the door, she saw the king of Jin standing outside. She was so shocked that she forgot to bow. King Jin walked in and saw Lu Chichi casually leaning on a chair drinking. Lu Chichi happily drank small wine, ate delicious food, hummed a tune in her mouth and when she saw the approaching king of Jin, she chuckled as if intoxicated and said, Chunbai, do I seem to have seen the prince? Chunbai saw that the young master was drunk and worried about offending the king of Jin again. She quickly bowed to the prince and came to his side, saying, Young master, you really are the prince. Lu Chichi stumbled up and approached the king of Jin, circling around. Okay, great, he's still alive. After speaking, she laughed to herself. Chun Bai saw that the young master was still cursing the king of Jin and was so scared that she knelt on the ground. The king of Jin frowned when he saw the woman who had lost her composure and said, Did you drink? To celebrate that you are still alive, and to celebrate that I am still alive. Lu Chichi finished speaking and plunged her head into the arms of the king of Jin. 
End of this chapter. Chapter 5. Embracing and Embracing. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5. Embracing and Embracing the Next Day. Lu Chichi woke up feeling dizzy and nauseous, touching her head and shouting. Chunbai, give me a glass of honey water. Ding dong, the system sounds. Lu Chichi, you have a lot of skills. Have you learned to throw yourself in the arms? Lu Chichi. What do you mean, don't be so scary, okay? System, let me make an exception for you. Lu Chichi didn't know what the system was saying when suddenly a screen appeared in front of her which happened to be the scene of herself and the last person rushing into the arms of King Jean. The visuals were too stimulating, and Lu Chi-Chi couldn't bear it, so she directly fucked herself in bed. Shameful. What a shame. When did Lu Chi-Chi do such a shameful thing? Quickly, Chun Bai arrived with honey water and saw that the young master was still lying in bed. She had become accustomed to it. Serving the young master, he drank honey water and couldn't help but mutter a few words. Master, you were too bold last night. If it weren't for the generosity of the King of Jin, they would have all met the King of Yen. Stop talking. It's too embarrassing. Her lifelong fame was ruined by wine. Chun Bai thought the young master knew she was wrong. Young master, do you know how ugly the prince's face was last night? Lu Chichi shook her head and said, I don't know. Chun Bai looked at it, it's over. I didn't have the heart to compete for favor, this time it's completely over. At this moment, the voice of butler who came from the door. Master, please, prince. Chun Bai first reacted and quickly came to butler who. She is an elderly person from the Jean Prince's mansion and is familiar with the family tutor. She came over to communicate first. Who butler, what can I do for the prince to invite the young master? Who, the butler, glanced at her and said, You girl, are you able to inquire about the master's affairs? Lu Chi-Chi couldn't hide from the situation. She adjusted her mindset and changed into new clothes before coming out of the bedroom. Manager who, she said, the prince is waiting for the young master in the study, who butler glanced at Lu Chi-Chi more. From now on, the Jean Prince's mansion has been quiet as if it doesn't exist. The Jean Prince has just returned and there is indeed a way to make such a scene. Lu Chi-Chi didn't say anything and asked manager who to lead the way all the way to the study. She stood at the door. Who butler knocked on the door? Prince, Master Lu is here. A cold voice came from inside, enter. Who butler opened the door? Lu Chi-Chi entered, and Chun Bai wanted to follow, but was stopped by Hu Butler. Lu Chi-Chi entered the study and saw the King of Jin standing with his back in front of a landscape painting. My servant, see the prince. The King of Jin turned around and said, Speak up. Lu Chi-Chi had been mentally prepared for this situation and was not surprised. The talisman has done its best, she said the King of Jin looked at the woman in front of him, several times different, but also cunning enough. Is this a talisman? It's different from ordinary amulets. Lu Chi-Chi was unhappy, and that's how he thanked himself. The King of Jin asked, How did you know that someone assassinated me last night? Listen to what others say. Some things should be said clearly to avoid planting the seeds of trouble. Who said that? King Jin squinted. Many people. King Jin sneered coldly. Zhao Kai opened the door from outside and came in with a letter to the King of Jin. The prince glanced at Lu Chi-Chi, opened the letter, and threw it at her. Lu Chi-Chi didn't like someone's condescending posture, and when she thought that this person was her own parents, she could only endure it. Glancing at the paper on the ground, she knew what was going on, but she didn't speak. The King of Jin asked, What do you have to say? This is the past of the servant. I don't know what the prince wants the servant to say. Fortunately, the system has explained all the past of the original owner, and no matter what is asked, it will not reveal anything. King Jean glanced at her and remained silent. 
Zhao Kai turned around and caught Chun Bai outside the door. Chun Bai was a bit confused, and at the moment she was thrown in, she instinctively knelt on the ground. Zhao Kai asked, Chun Bai, what did Lu Qiqi do this year? Chun Bai's body trembled, trembling as she recounted what had been happening to Lu Qiqi's side for a year. Lu Qiqi looked at the king of Jin without blinking her eyes. At this moment, what Lu Qiqi forgot was that she was no longer a strong woman in the business world, but a humble concubine. After hearing Chun Bai's words, the king of Jin found that he underestimated the woman in front of him. When Lu Qiqi saw this, she knew she should be aware of the current situation and give someone a step down, forcibly changing the topic. What other orders does the prince have? Go down. Yes, I'm leaving. Lu Qiqi walked up to Chun Bai and forcibly dragged her away. The two of them returned to Jinyu Garden for a long time, and Chun Bai finally recovered, crying and wiping away her tears. Master, are you still alive? Lu Qiqi rolled her eyes amusedly. Poor child, she was frightened and said, I saved your life. How can you thank me? Master, are we okay now? Well, it's okay. The prince is angry. Chun Bai couldn't figure it out and urgently proved that the danger had passed. He's doing well again. Chun Bai couldn't react, and Lu Chichi didn't give her too much time to figure it out. All right, I've been tinkering for a while, I'm starving. You go prepare something to eat, she said Chun Bai wiped away her tears and walked out. Ding dong, system sound appears. Congratulations to the young master, who has been promoted to the second level master. Reward two talismans Lu Chichi snorted coldly, and this good thing. The first reward was given to the king of Jin for saving a child, and now there are two more. Does this mean that he wants to save two lives? Little master will soon know. Lu Chichi rolled her eyes, she doesn't want it, okay. Soon, Chun Bai brought back a sumptuous meal. Watching all the delicious scenery, I realized my value and saved my job. The days in the Jean Prince's mansion are indeed very good, serving delicacies and delicacies every day. It's hard not to feel comfortable. She didn't stop looking at the delicious dishes on the table. Apart from her hobby of drinking, she also eats. For foodies, having food will never allow one mouth to speak. Chun Bai is also a bit confused. After being a maid for so many years, she knows that the young master has been favored. Xiao Zhu, I just went to the big kitchen and met many people who were asking me about it. Lu Chichi glanced at her and gestured to say anything, don't disturb my meal. Chun Bai knew the thoughts of the young master and continued, they asked me what the young master likes. Lu Chichi knows that if she's okay, someone wants to curry favor. Just tell them, I like silver. Chun Bai was unhappy and said, Master, this is too direct. Without silver, how can we go out and buy food? If you want me to say it, the young master will hang them. Lu Chichi glanced at her, I remember they are all your good sisters. Chun Bai pouted and said, seeing that the young master is fine, I want to flatter him. Yesterday, I didn't see them caring. The young masters they serve may one day catch the eye of the king of Jin and become a princess. Humph. Chun Bai felt that the young master should seize the heart of the king of Jin, so that there would be no more issues with those concubines. You, don't be so stingy. The prince belongs to everyone, not you alone. When others ask, you can speak up generously. Maybe in the future, when you encounter difficulties, they will also help you. Chun Bai saw the young master like this and wanted to nag. Lu Chichi stood up and stretched lazily, I'm also tired today. I'll go for a walk. Little master. Chun Bai was about to cry. The prince has all returned, and the young master doesn't know when he will receive favor by sticking it up. Lu Chichi didn't care and left the Jean Prince's mansion through the back door. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Prince's Banquet. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 6 Prince's Banquet Chunbai is not at ease and can only follow behind. The young master is good at everything, has a good temper, is good at speaking, but is willing to run outside. Over the course of a year, she gradually became accustomed to it. Lu Chichi dragged her injured and inconvenient body, squeezed the fat residue, and sent some to Brother Lu. Walking onto the street, someone recognized her adventure to save the child that day and warmly greeted her. After walking all the way, I found out that Aunt Wang's old hen had been lost, Uncle Li's grandson went to study at Hongming Academy, Wang Ergu, who sells tofu next door, and the second daughter of the shopkeeper at the Minxing restaurant across the street listened to the play, the owner of Tsaoji Tavern bought another red dress and put it on to show off. The old man selling tomatoes on sticks was hit by a carriage listening to various rumors along the way, Lu Rolai arrived at Lu Big. Brother's pork shop and happened to be away. Lu Chi Chi left behind the fat residue. On the way back, I also sold a lot of ingredients along the way, hoping to have another big meal tonight. Such a fairy-like day, it's so comfortable. After buying groceries, feeling that it was still early, I came to the Yiping Tea House to drink tea. At this point, it's all about having enough to eat and having nothing to do, coming to the tea house for leisure. Lu Chi Chi is also one of them. She has food and drink, and there are people around her to serve her. Why should she be like herself in her previous life, working tirelessly to make wedding clothes for others? Still, the current days are comfortable. Eat dim sum, drink tea, say a few words when meeting someone familiar, drink tea quietly when not meeting, and listen to others gossip. Many people say that the King of Jin returned triumphantly, and how many people are concerned about the position of Queen of Jin. There are also some small gossip. When Constable Ma was catching the prisoner, he collided with the little girl from the heavenly immortal tower and couldn't get up for a long time. System Constable Ma has an affair with a little girl, designed by his wife Du Shi. Lu Qi Qi. Bull. Li Jun Xian, the grandson of Li Shangshu, has obtained another beauty, Su Ling Qin, and will be carried in tomorrow. System. Su Ling Qin intentionally seduced Li Jun Xian, but was hit by Su Ling Qin's father Su Xiuzai. Su Xiuzai went to cause trouble, but they had no choice but to agree to enter as a concubine. Lu Chi Chi, this is also okay. The son of the ma shopkeeper at the Hutanku restaurant is not his own, and the situation is very fierce now. The ma shopkeeper is going to divorce his wife. System. The child is the son of Wang and the chef. Lu Chi Chi. Guardians steal from themselves, good job. Lu Chi Chi listened to other people's gossip and learned about their secret histories from the system, but she was unaware of her current whereabouts, all of which fell into the ears of the King of Jin. Lu Chi Chi and his servants have just returned to the Jin Prince's mansion. I heard some great news that the prince is hosting a banquet, and all the concubines will attend. Chun Bai was still a bit happy at first, but when she heard that it wasn't just the little master, she felt a bit unhappy. Lu Chi Chi didn't care. After returning to the house, she leaned on the soft collapse like a boneless cat and picked up her notebook casually. Chun Bai sighed as she looked at the young master like this. All right, don't think too much. I'm hungry, go see what's delicious. Chun Bai looked at the restless young master. I know how to eat and play all day long. When the king of Jin didn't come back, it could be said that he was nourishing his energy. What about now? Wanting to preach, Lu Chi Chi impatiently waved her hand. She can only go to the big kitchen first and inquire about the situation. Lu Chi Chi finally cleared her ears and leaned against the soft couch, understanding Chun Bai's thoughts in her heart. In her opinion, what's good about competing for favor? It's still a comfortable little life now. Isn't it good to eat when you're hungry and go out to spend when you have money? Chun Bai moves quickly and brings back four dishes and one soup when she comes back. Chun Bai arranged the dishes and revealed the information she had inquired about. Xiao Zhu, just now Xiao Xiao Zhu went to Sun Xiao Zhu's side, I don't know what else he sent. Speaking of this, 
Chun Bai is not satisfied with the young master. The ten young masters were all given by the Empress Dowager to the King of Jin. In theory, their food, clothing, and daily necessities were all the same. Why do other young masters always have to outdo them? Chun Bai saw that the young master was silent and began to nag, even though the prince prefers the young master, how can they take advantage of it? Lu Chi Chi was eating when she heard these words and was scared to the point of choking. Chun Bai quickly got busy, but when Lu Chi Chi calmed down, she continued to nag, Master, why don't we also take care of it? Those are useless, Lu Chi Chi said nonchalantly, why isn't it useful? Xiao Yinqing's father is the governor of Jiangnan. He is also a corrupt official and very wealthy. Chun Bai's face darkened slightly. Sun Rume's aunt is a concubine in the palace. Where's Tang Xiaozhu? Chun Bai was unhappy. How could she feel that Xiaozhu was boosting others' morale and destroying her own authority? Tang Xiaoye's father is a wealthy businessman from Yangzhou. Chun Bai didn't give up yet. Where's Gu Xiaozhu? She doesn't have any prominent family background, does she? You should have seen the wooden hairpin on Gu Ling's head. Yes. It's just a piece of broken wood, it's still so ugly. I don't know if the owner did it intentionally. The hairpin on her head is ebony. What's good about ebony? Chun Bai pouted. Lu Chichi explained, the royal family uses rosewood, which is even more precious than rosewood. Chun Bai was dumbfounded. An inconspicuous hairpin, still so precious. There's a lot you don't know. Lu Chichi couldn't bear to see that the innocent little girl was frightened. Now that the King of Jin has returned, it would be a good thing to strike her first. The ten maids chosen by the Empress Dowager, apart from herself, all have backgrounds. Chun Bai was really scared and remained silent for the whole afternoon. In the evening, Hu, the butler, was busy with many maids. Lu Chichi, like no one else, nestled on the soft ground, reached out to pick up the tea with just the right temperature, ate the exquisite dim sum, and looked at the storybook that had just come out. This day, don't be happy. Chun Bai rarely spoke and waited quietly beside her. Lu Chichi looked at the poor Chun Bai and said, What is the name of Li Shangshu's grandson? Li Junxian, Chun Bai's eyes lit up, What is a beauty's name? Su Lingqin. Yes, her name is Su Lingqin and she is Su Xiuzai's daughter. This marriage can be considered a high priority. Chun Bai became enthusiastic and said, Su Xiuzai has repeatedly failed. I really don't know what he's still busy with at this age. According to Su Xiuzai's talent, one can become a master. Lu Chichi knew in her heart that Su Xiuzai's repeated failures were due to the fact that he had no relationship with the court. She took on the line of Li Shangshu and wondered whose thought it was. Su Lingqin's brain circuit is fast enough. The water in Li Shangshu's mansion is deep enough, I wonder how long she can hold on. The two were chatting when there was noise coming from outside the door. Is Sister Lu available? Upon hearing the commotion, I knew that the person coming was Xiao Nianqing, the young master of Xiao, who was mentioned not long ago. The two of them are not familiar, and when they say, Sister Lu, Xiao Nianqing's posture is quite direct. Lu Qiqi put away her notebook and glanced at Chun Bai. Chun Bai went to the door to pick up someone. Just arrived at the door, Xiao Nianqing happened to walk in. My servant, please see Xiao Xiaozhu. Xiao Nianqing ignored Chun Bai's salute and her gaze fell on Lu Qiqi. Sister Lu, why haven't you changed your clothes yet? Xiao Nianqing said, lightly flicking her impressive fox fur cloak. Ding dong, system. This fox cloak was confiscated from the tribute by the governor of Jiangnan Lu Chichi. He he, you have enough courage. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Promotion of Lady Lu You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 7 Promotion of Lady Lu Lu Chichi was mocking in her heart, daring to show it off and pretending to be tired on her face, coughing twice while covering her mouth. Unfortunately, 
I may have caught a cold and felt a bit uncomfortable. This is too unfortunate, Xiao Yinxing chuckled while covering her face. I feel a bit uncomfortable today, I'm afraid I won't be able to go tonight. Chunbai, dot. I'm not feeling well, I was fine just now. Xiao Yinxing tried to conceal her gloating and said, it's a pity that the prince is hosting a banquet for the first time and Sister Lu doesn't go. Lu Chichi coughed twice, indicating that she was very serious. Xiao Yinxing was afraid of getting sick, so she quickly took a few steps back and said, Sister Lu is resting so well, so I won't disturb her anymore. After finishing speaking, she quickly left with her maid Chunyu. The room became quiet, and Chunbai looked at Lu Chichi with a heart-wrenching expression, Master, why not go? Lu Chichi didn't care, even if you go, there won't be any good things. Why? You think, there was such a scene yesterday that many people probably don't want to see me. Dot. Chunbai couldn't believe it for a hundred thousand times. Lu Chichi doesn't want to compete for favor, she just wants to mess around and die. Chunbai also wanted to persuade the young master not to miss the opportunity to perform. At that moment, Butler who arrived and explained the specific time of the banquet. Lu Chichi was speechless. I can't hide anymore. Just as it was getting dark, the red lanterns of the Jean Prince's mansion were lit. Lu Chichi lives in a slightly remote location, walks late, and moves forward at a turtle-like speed. Chunbai was extremely anxious, and she dared not speak. Finally arriving at the main hall, Chunbai quietly breathed a sigh of relief. The prince hasn't arrived yet, it's not too late. I arrived late, leaving only one empty seat near the door. Lu Chichi didn't care and sat down directly. Lu Chichi glanced at the birds inside, each dressed exquisitely and looking very eye-dot catching. By comparison, her ginger yellow clothes looked a bit dim. This is exactly what Lu Chichi wants. She only cares about food and drink while competing for favor and leaving it to them. Looking at the picturesque pastries on the small table, as expected, the King of Jin has returned with a different treatment. Xiao Yenqing was clearly unhappy when she saw Lu Chichi coming, but she was slightly satisfied with her attire. The other concubines looked over together, each with a more or less hostile look in their eyes. Only Sun Rume sat calmly, unaffected by the people around her, with her waist and legs erect, and her best posture waiting for the arrival of the King of Jin. Lu Chichi is a bit unusual. She comes to top up, no, to eat. She stares at the dim sum on the table for a long time, wondering when she can eat and whether she can continue after eating. Soon, waves of footsteps came and the King of Jin strode into the main hall. Many concubines were excited and stood up together to salute. My servant, see the prince. My servant, see the prince. Lu Chichi stood up and bowed with everyone. The King of Jin only glanced at him, sat down, and said in a low voice, flat. Everyone answered, yes, got up and slowly sat down, their eyes quietly turned to the King of Jin. Xiao Yinqing was bolder and stood up with a glass of wine. Prince, I congratulate you on your triumphant return. Lu Chichi looked at the dim sum in front of her, thinking that it was finally ready to eat. She took a piece of cake to eat. It seemed that poor Xiao Yenqing, whose father was corrupt, was going to take the lead. She was indeed a father and daughter. Congratulations to this king. Miss Xiao, do you know how many people have died in battle and how many have buried their bones in foreign lands? The prince suddenly became angry and scared, causing Xiao Yenqing to kneel on the ground and dare not speak again. Sitting concubines, one by one, mocked Xiao Yenqing for being brainless and worried about being implicated, bowing their heads in silence. Yang Biyun was timid and was about to drink tea when she heard this commotion. The teacup didn't hold steady and fell to the ground, making a clang sound. King Jin scolded, hold on. Soon, two guards arrived and dragged Yang Biyun away. Everyone was frightened. Sitting one by one, their bodies trembled slightly. They dare not think deeply about Yang Biyun's experience, 
only hoping that the next unlucky one is not themselves. The king of Jin held a banquet and didn't eat anything. Xiao Nianqing was scolded and fined half a year's salary. Yang Biyun is not so lucky. I was beaten by the five army staff and passed out. Now I haven't even invited a doctor. The intention of King Jin is obvious, allowing her to rise and fall on her own. Each concubine carried a small thought, and now they were scared like quails. Lu Chi had known that there were no good banquets, but she didn't expect that some people had not yet performed well, and the King of Jin made a fuss first. Perhaps the King of Jin really has a problem. These have nothing to do with Lu Chi She originally had no extravagant expectations for men, just wanted to find a place to shelter from the wind and rain. Returning to Jinyu Garden, Chun Bai was too scared to speak. No matter how brave Lu Chi Chi is, she dare not go to the big kitchen to get something to eat. Fortunately, for a foodie, there is always something to eat by her side. As she ate, she looked at the poor Chun Bai and said, Chun Bai, your prince has a bad temper. Chun Bai slowly turned her head and looked at the young master, covering her mouth and crying. Lu Chi Chi is considerate and has little sympathy. She eats dim sum herself and waits for someone to vent. Chun Bai dared not cry loudly, but could only cover her mouth and choke her throat. At this moment, there was noise coming from the yard. Chun Bai wiped away her tears and stood beside Lu Chi Chi. Lu Chi Chi put away her dim sum and wiped her mouth to avoid exposing herself. Quickly, manager who brought two maids and brought food. Madam Lu, you haven't had dinner yet. The old servant has brought it to you. Mrs. Lu. Isn't it Lu Xiaozhu? Today, Xiao Nianqing was punished. When Yang Bian's life and death were unknown, the butler brought food and even referred to it as Mrs. Lu. What should the king of Jin do? Are you planning to kill yourself? Is this how he repaid himself for helping the king of Jin escape with kindness? Chun Bai reacted quickly and got to know Butler Hu for a few more years. She quickly came to Butler Hu's place. Manager Hu, did you just say that? Hu, the butler, smiled and looked at Lu Chi Chi, look at me. I forgot to mention big things. Suddenly, there are many young masters in the mansion, and no one will restrain them. It will make outsiders laugh. The prince thinks that the young master is the most suitable, and he elevates the young master as his wife. In the future, the wife will manage the backyard, which can be considered legitimate. Ding dong, system. Congratulations to Mrs. Lu. Lu Chi Chi. Congratulations, you'll be killed sooner or later. System. This is a good thing, will no one dare to bully Mrs. Lu in the future? Lu Chi Chi gritted her teeth and said, Are you gloating? System. Dot. Chun Bai saw the young master not speaking and thought she was too happy. In the blink of an eye, she turned into a happy bird and smiled as she bid farewell to Butler Hu. The identity of the young master has changed, and the butler Hu has been much more polite to Chun Bai. When she saw the young master only looking at the food and not eating it, she thought she was overjoyed. Xiao Zhu, oh no, it's madam. Isn't madam too happy? She even forgot to eat your favorite dish. Lu Chi Chi then carefully looked at the six dishes and one soup in front of her, and sure enough, they were all her favorites. Someone is warning themselves. Being threatened, she has no appetite. Turn around and take out the unfinished dim sum to eat. Chun Bai is strange. Madam, what's wrong? End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Wading Through Muddy Waters You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Wading Through Muddy Waters The Second Day Lu Chi Chi became his wife, which attracted many concubines to come and visit. Giving gifts one by one, welcoming each other with a smiling face, and keeping her mouth shut, Lu Chi Chi thought her father had secretly given birth to so many illegitimate daughters outside. Sister Lu, the first time Xiaoya saw you, she thought you were particularly kind. 
Today, it seems that Sister Lu has a particularly auspicious appearance. No wonder the prince is fascinated by Sister Lu. Lu Chi-Chi didn't eat for a night, only ate a plate of dim sum, and went to bed very late. With dark circles under her eyes, she watched someone talk nonsense, and she also took it. Using a pre-prepared handkerchief, put it on the edge of your mouth, cough twice, and say, Sister Tang really knows how to talk. As you are in the position of madam, you need to do something. No way, Sister Lu has wronged her sister. That's right, there will be more places for me to look up to Sister Lu in the future, Shi Chuxin helped. Lu Chi-Chi knew about this person, and Shi Chuxin was the cousin of the Grand Palace made Shiyu beside the Empress. Miyazi was a childhood sweetheart of the general stationed in northwest China. Due to Miyazi's father's greed for power, he sent his daughter to the palace. Gu Ling is the exogenous daughter of the Minister of Revenue, Wang Shangshu, who was raised outside. A ebony hairpin is enough to illustrate the woman's position in Wang Shangshu's heart. Ming Sichuan's father is the governor of Lanzhou. Dong Huaizhu is the eldest daughter of the imperial physician Dong in the palace. Yang Biyun, who was beaten by a military baton yesterday, had a great influence in the border area of Jiangbei where her father opened the Yangji Clinic. As his only daughter, she inherited her father's legacy. If she hadn't come to the capital to become a maid, she would have already become a doctor. Each of them has a strong background, but unfortunately, they let the daughter of a county magistrate from a remote and small place manage these women. Looking at the women with hidden knives in their smiles, Lu Chichi prepared to play Tai Chi and kick the ball out. What Sister Shi and Sister Tang said is true. In the future, please ask Sister Lu to take care of us. Before Gu Ling could finish speaking, Xiao Nianqing couldn't bear to watch anymore. Yesterday, she clearly told herself that she wouldn't go to the banquet, but she did, causing her to lose face in front of everyone. Later on, she was scolded and Yang Biyun got scolded. It must have been Lu Chichi who knew about it and deliberately made her look ugly. She hadn't calmed down yet, but the news she received was that Lu Chichi, a slut, had climbed onto her head. How could she be willing? Sister Lu, I came over yesterday. Sister Lu said she's not feeling well and won't go to the party. Did you know anything in advance? These words immediately attracted everyone's attention, and each one's gaze towards Lu Chichi was mixed with some sharpness. Cough cough. Lu Chichi covered her mouth and coughed twice. As she put away her handkerchief, she slowed down slightly, allowing Xiao Nianqing and Sun Rume sitting in front of her to see a little red on the handkerchief. Lu Chichi calmed down and her spirit and spirit looked even worse. She looked at Xiao Nianqing and said, what does Sister Xiao mean? Forget it, forget it, I have something to do, let's go first. Xiao Nianqing stopped asking, worried that Lu Chichi was suffering from tuberculosis. She adopted her illness and quickly left. Sun Rume stood up to bid farewell. The remaining people, seeing this, left one by one. Finally, it was quiet. Lu Chichi spread it on the chair picked up a piece of dim sum and threw it into her mouth. She ate happily. Chunbai approached Madam and said, Madam, who are they? They thought, I've become a lady now, and their status should also be elevated. How shameless! Chunbai was successfully swayed by Lu Chichi. Lu Chichi ate dim sum and told Chunbai, I'm not feeling well recently, so I should prepare more light meals. Chun Bai saw that Madam was talking nonsense again. For the next few days, Madam was lying on the soft bed, seemingly really sick. Her daily appetite was also decreasing, and she ate very light. Chun Bai thought that Madam was really sick and worried a lot. At this moment, something strange happened in the Jean Prince's mansion, which attracted all her thoughts away. Yang Biyun, who was knocked unconscious by the military baton that day, persevered. I haven't fully recovered yet, but I have survived. Chun Bai told Lu Chichi about this matter, and Lu Chichi was not surprised. Ten days later, Lu Chichi has become a wife and has been sick for ten days. 
Some people think that Lu Chi is unlucky, and when she dies of illness, they will see a joke. Lu Chi successfully overcame the danger period created by someone for herself. After being sick for ten days, she can finally go out and relax. She is in a good mood and has been humming a tune since leaving the Jean Prince's mansion. Chun Bai was delighted to see such a lady. Finally good, if it's not good, I don't know what harsh words those people will say. Seeing Madame walking away, she quickly caught up and said, Miss Husband, please be slow. It's not good to call Madame outside, it's still convenient for Mississippi. Lu Chi Chi didn't come out to let go for a while, feeling relieved. Seeing something delicious, she was about to share it with Chun Bai. When she turned around and heard the sound of horse hooves, she looked up and realized it was the king of Jin. Subconsciously, she dragged Chun Bai into a small alley. Chun Bai thought something big had happened, but when she recovered, she saw the king of Jin riding over. Miss, you. Lu Chi Chi quickly covered her mouth. In the eyes of others, the king of Jin is all tall and beautiful auspicious words. In her opinion, she doesn't want to see others being good and has a small belly and chicken intestines. If she lets this person know, if she comes out to let out the wind, she doesn't know what kind of sinister way to greet herself. Lu Chi Chi claimed to be quick and unnoticed, but she didn't know that the moment Chun Bai spoke, the King of Jin knew. The King of Jin, who rode over, ordered Zhao Kai, Madam has been sick for a long time. Please take a look, doctor. Yes, Zhao Kai was ordered to leave. The king of Jin leisurely rode his horse on the street, receiving the attention of the Chinese people, and later stopped at the Limin restaurant. Third brother. Upstairs, King Qin popped his head out of the window and waved at King Jin. King Jin glanced at him and walked upstairs. After King Jin entered, King Qin immediately stood up and asked with concern, Third brother, is your injury okay? Hurt. King Jin glanced at him, who said that. Upon hearing this, King Qin forcefully changed the topic and said, It's been a long time since I sat drinking with my third brother. Today, we're not going home until we're drunk. Hmm, said the King of Jin. Soon, the good wine and dishes will be delivered. King Jin left the capital for a year and did not eat authentic Beijing cuisine for a long time. He ate a lot but did not drink much alcohol. King Qin did not persuade him to drink, but only invited King Jin to eat vegetables. After eating for a while, King Qin spoke up and said, Third brother, what did Father Emperor say when entering the palace this time? King Jin stopped his chopsticks and looked at King Qin, what do you mean by that? King Qin was a bit nervous, but later spoke shamelessly, Third brother, you should have heard about my mother's consort. The king of Jin knew about the good deeds done by Empress Dowager Da, and waited for King Qin to continue. King Qin couldn't speak up, drank a glass of wine, and boldly said, I asked Empress Dowager, the Khoi and the Fuyun Palace were not done by Empress Dowager Dowager Dowager. The king of Jin sighed and looked outside for a long time before speaking up, the Duke Su beside consort Da has already confessed. Su Gonggong was the childhood sweetheart of Empress Dowager Da. Dowager Da's parents sent their daughter to the palace for glory, wealth, and honor. Su Gonggong followed her all the way and became a eunuch in the palace. The King of Jin knows about this, and the King of Qin also knows about it. Now that Duke Su has stopped all the blame, Consort Da's actions are chilling. Third brother, is there room for a turnaround? After thinking for a while, the king of Jin spoke up, it depends on what the mother means. Upon hearing these words, King Qin's eyebrows and eyes immediately relaxed, and he said some seen words before quickly leaving. Zhao Kai finished the task assigned by King Jin and came over to hear King Qin's words. Seeing King Qin leave, he walked in and said, Prince, why did you have to wade into this muddy water? Even he could see that someone deliberately set up a trap and wanted to kick King Qin out. King Jin was lucky, how could he still help King Qin? 
thinking of the things that King Qin did in those years, I still hate it so much that my teeth itch. The King of Jin was not angry, drinking one cup at a time. It seemed that today's wine was particularly good. The King of Jin drank a lot in a row. End of this chapter Chapter 9 There is a leak in the Jin Prince's mansion. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 There is a leak in the Jin Prince's mansion a first-class tea house. Lu Chi-Chi brought Chun Bai to Yiping Tea House. This is the place she always comes to when she comes out. A pot of tea and several plates of dim sum can relax while listening to others gossip. A few young ladies next to me had a conversation and heard about myself. Have you heard that the King of Jin proposed a concubine as his wife? No, right. I've heard about it too, it should be true. Regarding her own gossip, Lu Chi-Chi immediately widened her eyes and curiously looked over to see who knew so much about what had happened in the Jean Prince's mansion. Is there a leak in the Jean Prince's mansion? Looking over, the three women who saw gossip were actually Guo Xilan, the third daughter of Governor Guo, Yen Linger, the legitimate daughter of General Yen, and Cheng Ro, the fourth daughter of General Cheng. Seeing the three of them together, Lu Chi-Chi was still a little curious. Not long ago, Cheng Ro and Yen Linger had a big fight over a box of rouge. Many people laughed at it, and after only a few days of effort, it was all over. I also heard that the lady just mentioned is a poor woman from a small place who cannot stand the stage, Yen Linger said sarcastically. Lu Chi-Chi is speechless. Her father is a county magistrate and he doesn't hold a high official position, so there's no need to slander herself like this, right? Chun Bai heard this and became unhappy. Cheng Ro said, I heard that the woman used extraordinary means to gain the attention of the King of Jin. What means? Guo Xilan asked curiously as she fell behind in her news. After Lu Chi Chi smiled, she held a teacup and wanted to hear what someone had to say. Cheng Ro approached the two and whispered, I heard that woman's name is Lu Chi Chi. On the day King Jin returned, she rushed over and hugged King Jin's thigh. Ah. No, right. It's true. Cheng Ro saw it with her own eyes. What happened later? Later on, the King of Jin couldn't bear it and elevated her position. In order to deter those concubines, he deliberately scolded Xiao and beat Yang. I don't know about concubine Yang, but I know about concubine Xiao. I heard her father is Lord Xiao, the governor of Jiangnan. Chun Bai couldn't listen anymore and wanted to argue with them. When she saw Madame get up, she was worried that the situation would escalate too much and it wouldn't be easy to end. To her surprise, Madame also joined in. Is your news inaccurate? Lu Chi Chi leaned in and took the initiative to gossip. Who are you? Cheng Ro asked. Lu Chi Chi said silently, It doesn't matter who I am, what's important is that I know more. How could it be? Cheng Ro didn't believe it. Let me put it this way, I know a maid from the Jean Prince's mansion. She told me about this. Who do you know? Cheng Ro asked. I know that maid named Chun Bai is a maid who serves Madame Lu. Chun Bai is speechless. Madam, is there a way to arrange yourself like this? Cheng Ro heard this without saying a word, and she also knew it. Tell me, what do you know? Lu Chi Chi, I heard Chun Bai say that Lady Lu is too scheming. She has always been quiet like a little transparent. When the King of Jin returned, she immediately exposed her nature and caught the king's attention with vulgar and indecent actions. She paused for a moment and looked at the three of them, disdainfully saying, You said, this matter should be on you. Can you do such a thing? No, Ching Ro immediately stated. It's too embarrassing, Yen Linger said. Who would do this to belittle themselves, Guo Xilan said. Lu Chichi nodded and said, I'll tell you, the noblewoman in the capital would never do such a despicable thing. Chun Bai looked at the indignant lady, as if the person she was referring to was not herself. 
she also felt that the lady really had this desire for favor. She was no longer the lady, but rather the princess. Lu Chichi talked to the three noblewomen for a while, and later asked for some food. Before leaving, Lu Chichi became the Lu sister in their mouths. Chun Bai left the Yiping tea house for a distance, looked back, and made sure no one was following. She couldn't help but remind, Madam, you are so cruel to yourself. Not daring to ruin one's reputation outside is something that ordinary people cannot do. Lu Chichi doesn't care. Just talking, as soon as my lips touched, I wanted to say something and casually opened my mouth. Lu Chichi, who had a great heart, had just returned to the Jean Prince's mansion and realized something was wrong. Returning to Jean Yu Yuan, I saw the King of Jean sitting inside the house, and then saw the doctor standing next to me carrying a medicine box, which made me feel uneasy. After reading other people's jokes, it's my turn to be unlucky. Entering the door, he saluted the King of Jean and said, I see you, my servant. Slave. The King of Jean drank alcohol and when he returned, he was slightly drunk. After waiting long enough, his wine woke up. Looking at the woman who had been crazy outside for so long, a hint of mockery flashed in her eyes. Lu Chichi's brain was fast and she realized something was wrong. She quickly changed her mind and said, I will see the prince. Has Madam's illness improved? Just coughing twice, it's not a problem. She really coughed twice, and as for what others think, it's beyond her control. Chun Bai didn't have this kind of mental quality and knelt on the ground trembling. Oh. King Jean glanced at her. Thank you very much for your concern, the prince. I am in good condition, Lu Chichi said, reaching out to the doctor. Thank you for your help. The doctor waited for over an hour and finally saw the patient's condition. Judging by the person's demeanor, he knew that the woman was fine without having to check her pulse. Due to the presence of King Jean, he began to check his pulse in a conventional manner. Lord Hui, Madam has qi deficiency. Just take a few pills and it will be fine. Lu Chichi lowered her head. Why is it qi deficiency? It should be heart deficiency, okay. The King of Jean looked at the butler next to him and said, you can personally handle this matter. Yes, replied Butler Hu. The King of Jean was satisfied and stood up to leave. Lu Chichi gently patted her little heart and liver, almost jumping out just now. Just when she thought she had escaped, reality slapped her face. Seeing the herbs sent by Butler Hu, Lu Chichi felt very bitter just by smelling the taste. She held her breath, drank it in one breath, and covered her mouth to prevent herself from spitting it out. Hu Butler didn't leave until he watched her drink the medicine. Chun Bai saw Madam feeling so uncomfortable and advised, Madam, the good medicine tastes bitter. For the sake of your health, you should endure it. Lu Chichi nodded and remained silent. Suddenly, I envied the servant girl, knowing nothing but caring. Chun Bai advised again, Madam, the prince cares so much about you. You should come to the prince and express your gratitude. Lu Chichi understood the maid's meaning and didn't want to listen to her now. She would not understand the servant girl's mind. She went to the king of Jin to brush her face in the name of Xian. Someone forgot so quickly that Xiao Yenqing took over the salary for half a year in order to brush her sense of existence. Yang Biyun was beaten by the army because she was too timid. She only wants to eat, drink, and have no such thoughts. Returning to the house, lying in bed, quickly fell asleep. Poor Chun Bai is still thinking about how to persuade Madam not to miss this opportunity. Seeing Madam like this, she's in a hurry. Staying by the bedside all the time, when Madam woke up, she immediately spoke up, Madam, the prince is so kind to you. What else are you dissatisfied with? I am very satisfied. Madam should go to thank the prince for her kindness, show her face, and receive more favor from the prince, wouldn't it be better? Now that there is no princess in the Jean Prince's mansion, if the lady goes further and becomes a princess, how great it would be. Lu Chichi collapsed on the bed, 
using the salty fish breath emanating from her whole body to tell Chunbai that she did not have that ambition. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Invitation from the Side Princess You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Invitation from the Side Princess in the Evening Butler who brought the herbs again and watched as Lu Chichi drank them. After drinking, Lu Chichi asked, Manager who, when will my body recover? The doctor prescribed medicine for seven days, who Butler answered truthfully. Lu Chichi collapsed into a chair and said, Seven days. She couldn't lower her head. Madam, please rest. I will retire. Wait a minute. The butler who, who was about to leave, stopped and said, Madam, what else is there to do? Where is the prince? I just went out. Lu Chichi waved her hand weakly, not looking down at the right time. In order to show her sincerity, she went to the Shoshue pavilion several times to express her feelings to the king of Jin. However, in the middle of the night, she did not see any trace of the king of Jin. Instead, she saw several maids sneakily following behind. Lu Chichi is too lazy to think. The next day, Lu Chichi woke up and was about to go find the king of Jin when the butler who arrived with a medicine bowl in hand. Lu Chichi glanced at it, didn't say anything, brought it over and took a sip. Manager who glanced at him and left with a medicine bowl in hand. Chun Bai approached Madam and said, Madam, is the medicine not bitter? She looked very uncomfortable yesterday. Not bad. The habit is good. Can she refuse if someone gives her some hard work again? In my heart, I have cursed countless times. What a bullshit prince, he is simply an ungrateful villain. What else did Chun Bai want to say? There was a commotion coming from outside the door. She went to the yard and found that it was Chun Yu, the maid beside Xiao Nianqing. When I saw this person, I thought of intentionally using Klitch A.S. that day. Later, when I ran into him, he spoke ill of his wife behind her back and was somewhat unwilling to see her. Spring Rain was clever and walked over with a smile on her face. Sister Bai, she said and handed a hairpin to Spring Bai. Chun Bai wanted to refuse, but Chun Yu spoke again, is Madam here? In. Chun Bai refused and couldn't stop, bringing Chun Yu to his wife. When Chun Yu saw Lu Chichi, she bowed politely and said, I will see Madam, my servant. The spring rain is coming. Lu Chichi pinched a piece of dim sum and sent it into the mouth, trying to suppress the bitterness in her mouth. Madam, do you remember the servant? Chun Yu was somewhat surprised. Lu Chichi smiled and said, I always remember when Chun Bai mentions it. Chun Yu gratefully glanced at Chun Bai and quickly took out the invitation. Madam, this is an invitation sent by Princess Qingbian, indicating that the tea party will be held at Luming Pavilion on the morning of the day, inviting Madam to go and admire the flowers together. Qingbian Princess Madam Hui, she is the concubine of King Qing. Just drinking tea and admiring flowers. Chun Yu understood what his wife meant and hurriedly answered, there are also dim sum. Okay. Lu Chichi looked very happy. Chun Yu saw that the task was completed and bowed before leaving, but Chun Bai was not happy. Madam, the lady of the Jean Prince's mansion also sent an invitation to her. How could she have a concubine or maid send it? They deliberately tried to intimidate you, can't you tell? Lu Chichi was speechless. Chun Bai was not angry, but rather happy. Madam, you can see it. Lu Chichi glanced at her and said she didn't want to speak. They have made it so obvious that they can't see it anymore. Isn't it a fool? Chun Bai quickly smiled and flattered, Madam, there must be some pitfalls in this tea party. Please be careful. Lu Chichi has a clear idea in her heart. The relationship between Prince Qing's concubine and the palace lady is very good, and it is highly likely that it was Sun Rume's idea. Look, what did she say? Someone can't sit still anymore, take the initiative. Well, using tea parties to appear mediocre can also prevent future troubles. 
she has no intention of competing for favor, only wants to fish and show them her lying flat attitude, so that they don't disturb her in the future. Lu Chichi's mind was certain, but she didn't take this matter to heart. She turned around and saw a peach on the table, big and red. She picked up one and took a bite, it was so sweet. She picked up another one and gave it to Chunbai, try it too. Madam, servant, Chunbai said before she could finish speaking, Lu Chichi's peach blocked her mouth. You can eat whatever you want, there's not so much nonsense. Chunbai took a bite of the peach and smiled, Madam, it's so sweet. When did the thing I gave you get rough? Chunbai chuckled and continued eating peaches. A plate of peaches was quickly eaten by two people. Lu Chichi touched her stomach and felt full. What else was missing from her mouth? Chunbai, what do you have for lunch? I'll go take a look in the kitchen. Chunbai ran away in a flash. Lu Chichi leaned casually on the soft couch, eating melon seeds and reading the script. These days of eating and waiting to die are really wonderful. I really hope to live like this forever. Chunbai was very fast, as if she had just arrived and came back with the vegetables. Lu Chichi saw Chunbai, who was doing things so quickly, laughing and jokingly. Chunbai, it was quite fast today. Chunbai smiled mysteriously and said, It's not me. When I went, Chun Mama had already prepared it. When I left, she even asked me what Madam likes to eat so she could prepare in advance. Lu Chichi smiled and said, This is the celebrity effect. One day when I have bad luck, this kind of wall grass will fall the fastest. Faced with a sumptuous lunch, Lu Chichi was not influenced by outsiders, ate and drank enough, and found great satisfaction in her heart. And because she ate too much, she needed to move around. Let Chunbai take out a blanket and lay it in the shade under the tree. She changed into loose clothes and did stretching exercises on the blanket. Chunbai has been with Madam for a year and has long been accustomed to it. Outside the yard, the people who were secretly watching thought that Lu Chichi was possessed by a fairy when they saw this commotion. Chunbai saw some people probing their heads and raising their chin arrogantly. They all have backers, but they are all under the leadership of the lady. Thinking about it, he reminded, Madam, aren't you looking for the prince? I've looked for it, your prince can't see me. Lu Chichi made a back pull and sat on the ground, practicing breathing. Madam, you can go again. A few days ago, I was anxious to see the prince's energy disappear so quickly. Now it's just that the young master has become a lady. If she becomes a princess, just think about it. However, after practicing breathing for a while, Lu Chichi collapsed and emitted a strong lazy aura from all over her body. I've eaten too much and can't walk anymore, let's wait for next time. After finishing, I closed my eyes and quickly fell asleep. Chunbai, dot. She had already known about Madam's temperament, but it was too unproductive. Lu Chichi slept for a full hour. Waking up, I saw Chunbai sighing beside me. Madam, tomorrow Princess Qingbian also invited Xiao Nianqing and Sun Rumei. Be careful when the time comes. Lu Chichi was deeply moved by the heartbroken maid and said, Okay, listen to you. There is no simple woman in the backyard. As a maid, she also needs to be well dot rounded. I have found a big advantage myself, knowing that the King of Jin has a cold personality. Among so many women, only the woman without a background can stand out and not make people envious. Some people see their foundation as unstable and take advantage of it to do something. I think tomorrow's tea party will be very lively. However, she is too lazy to flirt and fight with those women, let alone compete for favor. She only goes to eat and drink, anyway, with her current abilities, those women combined do not know their opponents. Ding dong, customer, you are too narcissistic. Lu Chi Chi. With you around, what am I afraid of? System, woo woo, the customer is so lazy. Lu Chi Chi. Don't say that, this is trust. Trust, do you understand? System. 
Disgusting. Lu Chichi reached out and said, All right, stop talking nonsense. Give me a talisman, I'll use it for my life tomorrow. System. No need. Lu Chichi. Such a good opportunity, someone won't harm me. I can't save others on my own, can't I? Lu Chichi also wants to clarify that the system is no longer responding to her. She was thinking, no need, is there no one to die tomorrow? What women would miss such a good opportunity? Guess what surprises there will be tomorrow? If you guess correctly, there will be prizes, hashtag carrot. Carrot hashtag, end of this chapter.